Turn your eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. This holy mass is being offered for the intentions of Lee Alexander. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ruth. In the days of the judges, famine came to the land, and a certain man from Bethlehem of Judah went he, his wife, and his two sons, to live in the country of Moab. Elimelech, Noami's husband, died, and she and her two sons were left. These married Moabite women. One was named Ophra, and the other Ruth. They lived there about ten years. Then, both Mohlam and Chilion also died, and the women were bereft of her, and the woman was bereft of her two sons and her husband. So she and her daughter-in-laws prepared to return from the country of Moab, for she had heard that the Lord had visited his people and giving them food. Then Ophra kissed her mother-in-law and went back to her people, but Ruth clung to her. Noami said to her, Look, your, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her God. You must return to follow your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, but Ruth said do not press me to leave you and to turn back from your company. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. This was her, Noami, she, who returned from the country of Moab, came back with Ruth to Mabatais, her daughter-in-law, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to this psalm, my soul give praise to the Lord. My soul give praise to the Lord. He is happy who is helped by Jacob's God, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who alone made heaven and earth the seas, and all they contain. My soul be praise to the Lord. It is he who keeps faith forever, who is just to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who set prisoners free. My soul be praise to the Lord. It is the Lord who gives sight to the blind, who raises up those who are bowed down, the Lord who protects the stranger 
and upholds the widow and orphans. My soul in praise to the Lord. It is the Lord who loves the just, but towards the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. Zion's God from age to age. My soul in praise to the Lord. Alleluia. my eyes, O Lord, that I may consider the works, the wonders of your law. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they got together and to disconcert him, one of them put a question, Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second resembles it, you must love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel of St. Matthew was written by St. Matthew under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. In particular, as its audience the Jews, and particularly the Jews, obviously, who had become Christian. It's very much, St. Matthew's Gospel, focused upon the truth that Christ is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Those twin hinges, one might say, like, like a door has a hinge, the hinges of the Old Testament, the law and the prophets. They are now fulfilled and indeed superseded in and by Christ. And that's very much the thrust of the whole of St. Matthew's Gospel. And today in the short passage that we've just listened to, the two groups who were uppermost at the time of our Lord in terms of the various parties within the Jewish religion, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees. That's why they disconcert him or seek to by saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? The Pharisees were a strict religious group amongst the Jewish people. Their base was the synagogue, the place of prayer in the community. They were generally from the lower or middle class. They believed in the resurrection of the dead, and they, in terms of the law, not only abided by the Torah, the law, but also the many interpretations of the law which form part of the body of Jewish custom. The Sadducees, on the other hand, were associated not with the temple, uh, with the with the synagogue, but with the temple in Jerusalem. They were the temple party. And they were from the upper classes and they were wealthy. They didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. And also they believed or abided, yes, by the law, the Torah, but not by any of the other uh, interpretations. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees were themselves clashing. But the one thing they're united in 
is in opposing Jesus. And that's why the Pharisees in the Gospel this morning put this question, Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? And our Lord replies, but he replies in a way that they didn't expect, because he puts together the love of God and the love of neighbor. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also, which is not to put the other commandments into disrespect or into redundancy, but these commandments shape and form all the others. Because without love of God and without love of neighbor, then false witness, adultery, um, coveting one's neighbor's goods, coveting one's neighbor's wife, killing, not honoring mother and father, all the other commandments, in other words, do not make sense because they themselves hang upon these two great commandments. So Jesus, as the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, is saying to those who really should have known better, the Pharisees, look, don't try and trick me, don't try and catch me out. It is love of God and love of neighbor, the greatest and the first commandment, but the second resembles it, that love of neighbor. Let us pray that we in our own lives and the circumstances of our lives may always show our love for God and our love for neighbor. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. The act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.